This is the story of New Order. It's a relentless story of beginnings and endings, of excess and cunning, of pride and immaturity. It's the most curious and chaotic of rock stories, and <laughs> who's to say that it really happened? No order have been together in one form or another for 16 years. From a shadowy underground, first as Warsaw, then as Joy Division. Their distress songs about depravity and deprivation seem to shake and writhe out of deep, craven trouble. Their music was fantastic. Not many noticed, because after two volatile, intimate albums, just as Joy Division were heading off into their own sensational rock adventure, maybe even to become perverse superstars, their singer, Ian Curtis, snagged on the jagged edge between the pleasure of it all and the pain. Killed himself. This was some end. Four years, hard work, disintegrated. This is a story of New Order and how they endured, how they rebuilt, how they began again, changed their mind and the whole body of what they were because of a death, a new girl member, a change of name, an adoring manager, because of obscure disco music and Manchester nightlife, because they cared, <laughs> because they couldn't care less. Because you have to laugh. Because you have to cry. This is a story of new order who turned pop life into something maddening and perilous. They longed for success and recognition, yet needed to keep themselves to themselves, wanting reassuring glamour and chaste anonymity all at once. People like you find it easy. They could assign to any record company in the world. And on the sly sold as many records as any group ever has. In fear or in defiance of a normal fate. They obliquely, <laughs> indulgently stayed with their willfully uncommercial Manchester independent record label, Factory Records. This was the only label on earth romantic enough to let the group do what they pleased, how they pleased, when they pleased. They were very pleased. Even when they signed to a major American label, they were allowed to be as dreamy as they liked. The group was spoiled, and they audaciously sneaked out of the shadows of Joy Division to become the most elusive and drastically sardonic of pop groups, and the very edge again of becoming almost lifelike anti-superstars. They must have known exactly what they were doing. This is the story of a new order, a story that begins with the story of another group. I have to have my mask on for this, hold on. All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Steve. Come on. That wasn't too hard. The story of Joy Division. 